Hello and welcome to an episode that deals with public relations for political party or political public relations. I am Swati Singh, teaching as a guest lecturer at Delhi University and other colleges. I am also working as a corporate trainer and a creative director of an advertising agency. I have 12 years of experience with media and 8 years in teaching at various North Indian universities. We would be today discussing political public relations. The objectives to understand the use of mass communication and mass media in creating awareness of public relation issues, to comprehend the role of media with politics and understand its development, to understand the influence of news by political parties, to understand the role of news in formulating public opinion, to learn about the agenda setting function of media. Let's start with an introduction. Historically, the link between public relations and the political sphere is very distinct, but the term political public relations are rarely used. Public relations and politics have been two firmly entwined concepts since the beginning of recorded history. For evidence from ancient times, we can look at Aristotle and his schools of rhetoric thoughts that taught the art of persuasive communication, or more so, in more recent times, the work of the man commonly thought of as the father of modern day public relations, Sir Edward Bernays, and his belief that public relation is an art applied to a science. Both these schools of thought provide a clear connection between the two. This post, based on the lecture of contemporary theories and issues in public relations, looks into the concept of political public relations within a campaign, representing and governing context. The use of mass media in increasing awareness for political issues and politicians. The mass media today, with modern political success, depends upon control of mass media. Image making does not stop with the campaign. It is also a critical element in day-to-day -day governing. Since politicians' images in the press are seen as good indicators of their clout, politicians have learned that one way to guide the media's focus successfully is to limit what they can report on to carefully scripted events. A media event is staged primarily for the purpose of being covered. A large part of today's so-called 30-second presidency is the slicky produced TV commercial. Few, if any, administrations devoted so much effort and energy to the president's media appearance as did Ronald Reagan's. The Reagan White House operated on the following seven principles. Plan ahead. Stay on the offensive. Control the flow of information, limit reporters' access to the president, talk about the issues you want to talk about, speak in one voice, repeat the same message many times. The development of media politics. The daily newspaper is largely a product of the late 19th century, while radio and television have been around only since the first half of the 20th century. As recently as the presidency of Herbert Hoover, that is in 1929 till 1933, reporters submitted their questions to the president in writing, and he responded in writing, if at all. Franklin D. Roosevelt, from 1933 till 1945, was the first president to use the media effectively. Roosevelt held about 1,000 press conferences in his 12 years in the White House and broadcast a series of the fireside chats over the radio to reassure the nation during the Great Depression. At the time of Roosevelt's administration, the press had not yet started to report on political leaders' public life. The events of Vietnam War and the Watergate scandal soared the press on government. Today's news people work in an environment of cynicism. The press sees furtering out truth as their job, since they believe that politicians rarely tell the whole story. Mm -hmm. 
understanding the mass media. The media act as a key linkage institutions between the people and the policy makers and have a profound impact on the political policy agenda. The watchdog function of the media helps to keep government small. Many observers feel that the press is biased against whoever holds office and those reporters want to expose them in the media. With every new proposal being met with skepticism, regular constraints are placed on the growth of government. Conversely, when they focus on injustice in society, the media inevitably encourage the growth of government. The media portray government as responsible for handling almost every major problem. The rise of television has further individualism in the American political process. Candidates are now much more capable of running for office on their own by appealing to the people directly through television. Television finds it easier to focus on individuals than on groups. As a result, parties have declined and candidate personality is more important than ever. The rise of the information society has not brought about a corresponding rise of an informed society. With the media's superficial treatment of important policy issues, it is not surprising that the incredible amount of information available to the average American today has not visibly increased their political awareness or participation. The media's defense is to say that this is what the people want. Since they are in business to make a profit, they have to appeal to the maximum number of people. Public relations and politics have a lot in common, not least in the fact that both public relations practitioners and politicians are frequently criticized by people. But on a more serious note, public relations plays a role in politics and government policy by influencing public opinion to support a certain candidate or piece of legislation. Investigative Journalism this journalism connotes the use of detective-like reporting methods to unearth scandals, pits reporters against political leaders. There is evidence that television's fondness for investigative journalism has contributed to greater public cynicism and negativism about politics. Scholars distinguish between two kinds of media. The print media, which includes newspapers and magazines, and the broadcast media, which consists of television, radio and the internet. Each has reshaped political communication at different points in the world history. The first Indian daily newspaper was printed in Bengal in 1780. But daily newspapers did not become common until the technological advances of the mid-19th century. Ever since the rise of television news, however, newspaper circulation rates have been declining. The broadcast media have gradually displaced the print media as India's principal source of news and information. As a form of technology, television was almost as old as radio. The first television station appeared in 1931 in America. Nevertheless, the 1970s and 1980s were the developmental years of Indian television. The first political public relation activity was telecasted in America, where for the first time presidential debates were televised in 1960, Kennedy-Nixon debates. The poll results from this debate illustrate the visual power of television in American politics. Whereas people listening to the radio gave the edge to Nixon, those who saw it on television thought Kennedy won. Television took the American nation to the war in Vietnam during the 1960s and TV exposed governmental about the progress of the war. With the growth of cable television, particularly the cable news network, that is CNN television, has entered a new era of bringing news to the people and to the political leaders, as it happens. Since 1963, surveys have consistently shown that more people rely on television for news than on any other medium. And by a regular 2 to 1 margin, people think that television reports are more believable than newspaper stories. Young people are particularly likely to rely on television as opposed to newspapers for news. 
with the increase in cable channels and internet usage, a recent trend has been the increase in broadcast channels that are oriented towards particularly narrow audiences, often referred to as narrow casting. With so many readily available source of information for so many specific interests, it will also be extremely easy for those who are not very interested in politics to completely avoid news and public affairs. The result could be, well, a growing inequality of political information with the politically interested becoming more knowledgeable while the rest of the public slips further into political apathy. Only a relatively small number of television stations are publicly owned in India and Doordarshan plays a minimal role in the news business, attracting low ratings. In contrast, many other countries' major television networks are owned by the government. Reporting the news Although the Indian media is free and independent when it comes to journalistic content, they are totally dependent on advertising revenues to keep their business going. That is, news reporting is a business in India today, in which profits shape how journalists define what is newsworthy, where they get their information and how they present it. To a large extent, television networks define news as what is entertaining to the average viewer. A surprising amount of news comes from well-established sources. Most news organizations assign their best reporters to particularly beat specific locations where news frequently emanates from. Very little of the news is generated by spontaneous events or a reporter's own analysis. Most stories are drawn from situations over which newsmakers have substantial control. For example, those who make the news depend on the media to spread certain information and ideas to the general public. Sometimes they feed stories to reporters in the form of trail balloons, information leaked to see what the political reaction will be. Television news is little more than a headline service. These days, analysis of news events rarely last more than a minute. At the same time, complex issues like nuclear power, the nation's money supply, rape causes and pollution are difficult to treat in short news clips. Strangely enough, as technology has enabled the media to pass along information with greater speed, news coverage has become less thorough. Newspapers once routinely reprinted the entire text of important political speeches. The charge that the media have a liberal bias has become a familiar one in Indian politics. And there is some limited evidence to support it. Reporters are more likely to call themselves liberal than the general public. And more journalists identify themselves with one party or another. However, there is little reason to believe that journalists' personal attitudes sway their reporting of the news. Most stories are presented in a point or counterpoint format in which two opposing points of views are presented. A conclusion that news reporting contains little explicit partisan or ideological bias is not to argue that it does not distort reality in its coverage. Ideally, the news should mirror reality. In practice, there are too many potential stories for this to be the case. Journalists must select which stories to cover and to what degree. Due to economic pressures, the media are biased in favour of stories with high drama that will attract people's interest rather than extend analysis of complex issues. Television is particularly biased towards stories that generate good pictures. Seeing a talking head, a shot of a person's face talking directly to the camera is boring. Viewers will switch channel in search of more interesting visual stimulation. The News and Public Opinion For many years, students of the subject tended to doubt that the media had more than a marginal effect on public opinion. The minimal effect hypothesis steamed 
from the fact that early scholars were looking for direct impacts. For example, whether the media affected how people voted. The decision to cover or to ignore certain issue can affect public opinion. By focusing public attention on specific problems, the media influence the criteria by which the public evaluates political leaders. Media's influence on government. Even after the election, the media still plays a large role in influencing the government's agenda. Through spotlighting issues and directing public and political concerns. While the media may not be a source of new ideas for the government, it still has an effect on the policy makers because the public's familiarity with political matter is closely related to the amount and duration of attention these affairs receive in the mass media. It can be argued that in some incidents the media can set the political agenda by covering issues the government does not want to focus on. This was evident through the media coverage of the US interventions in Somalia and Bosnia and the media pressure on the government to take action. This is an example of the media informing the public by spotlighting an issue that would otherwise be unknown. This incident caused President Clinton to say the media was trying to force me to get America into a war. Instead of President choosing what international affairs to engage in, the media dictated what issues should be a concern. In another case, the media sparked political action by sending military force and humanitarian relief in response to 1990 coverage of starving children in Somalia. The mass media can be seen not only as a driving force behind cultural and social change, but also as an index for political mobilization, both domestically and internationally. Government effect on the media. Just as the media can help to shape the political agenda, the government can equally influence the media's coverage. Page argues that the government can dictate political media coverage to a certain extent because the media regularly uses officials as sources in news stories and they are able to express their views and set their agenda on a regular basis. The media has become dependent on using officials because of the nature of news gathering routines and the need for regular easy access to legitimate sources who possess valuable information. The government can shape the media's agenda by providing the press with briefing, background, press releases, interviews and press conferences. Although it is argued that the political process is more likely to have an influence on the news media than the news media on the political process, even if the media is skeptical of the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister still sets the agenda by receiving constant media coverage. Whether or not the media agrees with the Parliament House, it still influences the public through the spotlight effect by telling the public what issues are important. In some ways, the media, especially government media, can be seen as an instrument for the government to propagate their agenda and political stance. While the media does have the ability to select what information they use, as Page argues, the media is limiting itself by simply passing along the viewpoints of whatever political power is currently in control. In American politics, it's increasingly characterized by the permanent campaign in which politicians and interest group leaders engage. In the words of Hugh Hecklow, in continuous efforts to orchestrate, amplify and inject the presumptive voice of American people into the formulation and management of national policy. The media's agenda setting function. Today, people are trying to influence the government policy agenda. When they confront government officials with problems, they expect them to solve. Interest groups, political parties, politicians, 
public relations firms and bureaucratic agencies. These are all pushing for their priorities to take precedence over others. Political activists, often called as policy entrepreneurs, people who invest their political capital in an issue, depend heavily upon the media to get their ideas placed high on the governmental agenda. The staging of political events to attract media attention is a political art form. Important political events are orchestrated minute by minute with an eye on American television audiences or Indian television audiences. Moreover, it is not only the elites who have successfully used the media. Political public relations. Public relations is a widely recognized term and political actors rely on communication to reach to their key audiences. Yet, the term political public relations is rarely used as commentators tend to refer to them as political communication. How public relation plays important role in politics? Public relation plays a great role in politics in ways more than one. The public relation function of publicity is a great tool of gaining awareness for candidates and causes. Whether through mass media exposure, special events or targeted direct communication, making candidates' name known to the voters is a basic function of political public relations. Candidates can't win if voters don't know their names. Public relations role in providing voters with enough information to develop an understanding of candidates' position is another role of public relations, closely tied to politics. Knowing who's running is important, but once they have an awareness of who's in the contest, understanding where each candidate stands on the issue becomes a priority. Due to modern-day public relations, another dimension comes into play though one that moves public relation beyond publicity and the use of one-way message and towards two-way communication. At the highest level, this two-way approach allow for both persuasion of public and modification of politician with an eye to bringing both to that most valuable of outcomes, mutually beneficial relationships. Public relation techniques in politics. Until very recently, political communication was dominated primarily by one public relation technique. From the early 1960s through to the early 1990s, research focused primarily on the impact of mass communication, especially television. As a result, political communication stressed the impact of journalists and political actors on shaping public opinion. However, since the mid-90s, the dominance of mass communications has been challenged by three interrelated developments. Firstly, the introduction of the permanent campaign, which has blurred the difference between campaigning and governing so that politicians seek to dominate the agenda every single day. Secondly, there has been an increased professionalization of communication with public relations and marketing professionals transferring their skills to the political arena. Thirdly, the growing importance of new communication technology, namely new media, especially the internet, has encouraged political actors to use a much wider range of public relations tools. Under such developments, political communicators do not rely on one dominant channel to reach their target audiences. To cut the long story short, four main activities that stand out in political public relations are media management, that is controlling of messages, image management, that is protecting an identity or brand, relationship building, etc. Internal communication, engaging people within the party and controlling opinionated messages and information management, that is also known as gatekeeping. U.S. presidential elections, Barack Obama showed other politicians how to harness the power of web in 2008, bringing political campaigns kicking and screaming into the 21st century. 
Obama went beyond the static web pages of most past campaigns by tapping the power of web. 2.0 tools including Facebook, YouTube, blogs and discussion boards to create an engaged conversation with potential voters. Of course, Obama was not the first presidential candidate to raise a million dollars online. Nor was he first to use the internet grassroots efforts to mobilize online supporters to meet up their local communities. However, McCain failed to convert his online donors into votes and Dean failed to channel the online fervor into effective ground support. Obama was the first to do both by weaving technology and internet into the fabric of his campaign. Effective usage of mass media, organizing special events and also introducing a candidate who is known and who is close to the voters is actually a basic function of public relations. Although this line is debatable, but in almost all the developing countries, this criteria is used. To put it in the simplest way, at this point of time in Malaysia, a candidate cannot win an election if voters don't know them personally. Public relations also could help voters to understand the candidates better and them understand in their own language. Public relations can develop message to reach the target audience. A good publicity campaign can bring in votes because it is through this publicity campaign the difficult issues would be translated into simple words so that the voters would be able to understand the issues better and make a decent decision. Creating effective messages is an effective way as now a day voters have been assailed with so many information which has been manipulated. A difficult issue like the increase of petrol prices could be handled only if we get the message across to the people in a language they understand best and easy. The importance and need of using feedback by a public relations officer to communicate with the voters. One of the most important components of public relations is two-way communication. And in politics, two-way communication would be the make or break point for a politician to be successful or to put it straight to win elections. Voters want to communicate with their elected representative. Public relations use feedback or public opinion from the public as a guideline in implementing a project or even to plan for a project. In fact, feedback research and surveys are an integral part of public relations. Once feedbacks are obtained, it would be easy to develop messages according to the need of the community. Public relations excel in this area. Let's not forget, understanding public feedback or opinion is paramount when political parties draft their political standings, goals and objectives. A failure to undertake that task would be as good as losing in any elections. While it is hard to imagine a political campaign without publicity and persuasive messages, the fundamental partnership between politics and public relations at its highest levels go far beyond that. But perhaps not in the way that many people might think. And now, it's time for a quick recap. Political public relations is fast catching up with every country. In fact, news is today influenced by political parties, funding by various political bodies, whereby creating the concept of planted news. Also, the use of public relations in politics comes handy, especially when feedback is sought for betterment of the party in question. An everlasting relation between public relations and politics could create better polity for the masses at large. That is all we have for you today. We hope you enjoyed this session. See you again. Till then, thank you and Namaskar.